So Jessie is the CEO and founder of Green City Growers. She graduated from Smith College with um, a degree in sociology and studio arts and has a previous career in television, including time at the Food, Food Network and also work on um, two reality television shows, The Hills and Wife Swap. So I hope we're gonna get to hear a little bit about that. <laughs> um, but Green City Growers it has grown over the last eight years. Um, they build and maintain vegetable gardens and they serve now over 200 customers. Um, they uh, employ people in the local economy and I would say that they're just all around cool. So, um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jesse. Hi, everybody. I'm really excited to be sitting during a presentation. I know that seems like a small thing, but um, anyway, uh, my name's Jesse Van Azel. I am the CEO and founder of Green City Growers. Uh, we are a Somerville-based business. We're located across the street from Taza Chocolate. Um, so those garden beds, all of those structures outside of uh, across the street, that's us. Um, so anyway, Green City Growers, uh, the company, uh, the philosophy of the company is to convert unused spaces into urban farms. Um, and we do so to inspire self-sufficiency, revitalize city landscapes, and connect people deeper with a deeper connection to the food that they eat. So uh, the mission of the company is very much about getting people growing food and also providing access to fresh food by converting spaces that haven't been traditionally used for growing food. Um, so the philosophy, again, is really based on um, food, <laughs> food in the city. Um, so we've been in business since 2008. I've in, over the last eight years, I've installed over about, oh gosh, over a thousand raised beds around greater Boston and eastern Massachusetts. Uh, we've worked with over 6,000 individuals um, and grown over 150,000 pounds in under two acres of growing space. Um, so we specialize in intensive growing. Uh, we're most known for our rooftop farm at Fenway Park. Uh, we manage a 5,000 square foot rooftop farm on the roof there, uh, which all of the food that we grow goes to the on-site restaurants. And there's also a concession stand item available to you if you are in the park. Uh, it's a Kale Caesar app. They went from zero to 100 in terms of zero healthy items to one healthy item, even though it is still a Caesar wrap. So I can't totally endorse its healthiness. <laughs> But it's kale from the farm, um, so it's organically grown kale that's grown on site, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, we just put that in last year. We put it in uh, going into the 2015 baseball season. So um, that is the site that we are most noted for, though it is clearly one of the more recent sites that we've managed. We've been in business for a lot longer than Fenway Park, um, which has been a really interesting experience of kind of people not realizing that. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we also specialize in hands-on engagement. We've been really successful in developing employee wellness programs for businesses. So providing companies with on-site vegetable gardens where the staff are getting outside, they're growing their own food, um, they're in general just kind of engaging in uh, the earth and also meeting people from different departments. We do these with a dozen area companies in the area, which include pretty big businesses like Athena Health, Google, Akamai Technologies, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, National Grid, Verizon. These are all companies that have on-site gardens that are managed by Green City Growers. And I'll talk a bit about how we ended up doing that because um, it's not really kind of a logical thing <laughs> to be growing food at businesses. Um, but it really worked out in our favor. We also do school and education programs. So uh, we do tons and tons of school programming. We actually run programs for Boston Public Schools, a charter school in Cambridge. Uh, we do the entire Be uh, Linfield, Massachusetts elementary school, um, both of them. And we do all five Beverly, Massachusetts public schools. So the entire district of Beverly. Um, we do all of their schools, which means if you grow up in Beverly and you go through third grade, you actually engage in growing food as a part of your curriculum. So we're pretty proud of that. We also do the Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston. So we do after school programs for them and we run their summer camp program that we've run since 2010. Um, so last year we did four after school programs. We just got up to eight. Um, so lots of education programs and, you know, really a huge diversity of the types of work we're doing. We're working with restaurants, we're working with houses of worship, we're working with schools, elder care facilities, hospitals, uh, residential, 
Um, again, after school programming, grocery stores, ballparks. It's been a really, really interesting journey in terms of kind of putting out the services of converting on new spaces and then providing maintenance and seeing where it's gone and who is kind of signed up <laughs> for it. Um, so, um, you know, clearly we didn't start out with Fenway Park. Um, this is a picture of me when I started the company. Um, this is the most, the picture is most notable because I drew that sign myself and I made a carrot on a vine. For those of you who grow vegetables, carrots do not grow on vines at all. Um, neither do eggplants, but I didn't know that when I started Green City Growers. Um, I didn't know anything about growing food when I started Green City Growers. Um, I actually had previously, like, like Mia said, um, I grew food, sorry, I um, had previously worked in television production. Um, I graduated from Smith in 2006 and moved down to New York City because that just seemed like the thing to do. Um, I had kind of been looking to get a career in some sort of creative field. I had a vision of myself as like an art director at an advertising firm. That was kind of my vision of what direction I was going. And I tried to get an internship at an ad agency. And if anyone's ever tried to do that, it's like almost virtually impossible. <laughs> They're like, well, I don't understand why you don't have any experience. And you're like, well, I'm trying to intern so I can get experience. And it's just like a secular, just turn down every time, <laughs> just rejection after rejection. Um, so I ended up just kind of looking a little bit broader and reconsidering kind of what I wanted to be focusing on. And one of the things that I've always been passionate about is food. Um, I grew up in a very food-focused family. Uh, my boyfriend has pointed out that my family pretty much only talks about food. That's pretty much the only topic of conversation in my family in general. Um, I didn't realize that until he pointed it out, and it's completely true. And so I grew up with a family with a strong focus on culinary. Um, just my dad used to travel for work. He traveled all over Asia. I was that kid in school that, um, you know, everybody else's household was having spaghetti and meatballs and meatloaf. And we were having octal bibimbap and ma pao dofu and all these crazy things um, that I love. Um, and so food's been a huge passion for me. And I realized that um, there was a possibility of working in food. So I started applying for food-related jobs. I worked in service. I've worked in service for years. I worked at restaurants, worked at bars. Um, I did that through all of college, um, through college and into starting Green City Growers, but didn't think that I wanted to be working at um, a restaurant or at least wanted to supplement it with something that was a little bit more career-focused for me. Um, I didn't really see that as a career for me. And... Um, I ended up getting an internship with the Food Network, uh, which was great. I worked on Bobby Flay's shows. So I worked for Throwdown with Bobby Flay. I worked on Boy Meets Grill. It was a really great experience. I learned a lot. Um, when the internship ended, I ended up uh, in the general pool, which is freelance work, and ended up working for shows like Wife Swap, The Hills, I worked on Chopped. I worked on a bunch of shows that never aired. I worked on a lot of crap. and. Um, <laughs> It was a good experience in the sense that I learned a lot about logistics and project management and coordination. Um, it was not a good experience in the sense that I realized that I don't know if I necessarily could totally put myself into something that was meaningless. <laughs> and I really, some of the shows I worked on were meaningless. I actually think that they're bad for people to watch. Like, I don't think that people should sit inside and watch some of the work that I did on Wife Swap. Um, so that was a really interesting experience for me. I also got very sick of living in New York. Um, I realized that I actually want green space. I would like some trees. Um, trees would be great. I didn't realize that when I moved down there. Um, I, I also didn't realize that I was living in a food desert. I would re actually realize that later when I moved home. Um, so I also got broken up with. That's a big variable here. Um, in New York and moved home. I moved back to Boston. Um, so I'm at home, um, I am 24, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I continue to do freelance work, uh, TV production, and I get a call out of nowhere from my friend from college, Gabe. And he asks if I'm interested in doing in a business opportunity. And so I met with him and he had just come back from the West Coast and seen a lot of companies that were in mostly in Portland, Oregon and Seattle that were being really successful in installing raised bed vegetable gardens and providing maintenance for uh, residential, so for people at their homes. Uh, so the idea was you can, you, know, you can go and put a garden in and then you don't even have to worry about it. There's a company that comes by and grows all the food for you and you get fresh local food. 
And so he spoke to some of these businesses on the West Coast and they said it was viable and that it worked. And so um, he asked me if I wanted to be involved. Um, I did the initial research of seeing if there were any other companies like it in the area, um, specifically in Boston or in general in New England. Um, there weren't. Um, I looked a bit into kind of what the pricing structures look like and kind of just in general, I didn't have a lot of background in the philosophy around growing food. So I read The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan, which was a critical book for me in terms of feeling like I really understood what the issue was, um, really what the problem was that needed a solution. So that book was really, really inspiring. Um, I said, yes, let's do this. Um, and uh, then looked online to see what you had to do <laughs> to be in business, um, which pretty much is filing a tax ID number and getting a bank account. Um, so it's actually a lot easier than you think. Um, whether or not we jumped into it too soon is a whole other conversation. Um, so it was a great experience, um, you know, kind of feeling like, okay, this is something I can work on. And so uh, luckily we got started kind of in August of 2008. Um, which gave us the winter to plan. Um, I did a lot of research about pricing structures. I built out a website. I built out uh, what our products and services were going to look like. I took classes on how to do QuickBooks. Um, another big variable here is that both my parents are entrepreneurs. So I come from a line of biz small business owners. Um, my grandfather owned a very popular clothing and shoe store in Beverly. Um, my great-great-grandparents owned a bottling company that they sold to Coca-Cola in Portland, Maine. Um, it's a, been a kind of line of, of inventors and entrepreneurs on my mom's side. And my dad has done startup work um, in the technology industry for years. And so I had the wonderful uh, experience of going to my parents and being like, hey, mom and dad, I'm thinking about starting a business. And then being like, that sounds great. Like, how can we help you versus like, get a real job? <laughs> like, what are you thinking? Go get a real job. So that was a huge catalyst. And so I was luckily living at home. So I had financial support of living at home. Um, I was working at the time as a cocktail waitress at the Enormous Room uh, in Central Square, which is no longer there. It's now brick and mortar uh, for reference. Um, and I was doing, still doing freelance TV uh, through the whole first year of the company. Um, then we hit a really great milestone. Um, we got an article written about us in Edible Boston. Um, it was huge. It happened uh, going into the 2009 season, and it led to a bunch of customers, which were great. So we had people calling us. They were really interested. This is the image from Edible Boston. Uh, that's why I put it up. Um, I look at it, I'm like, whoa, nice, nice blackberry. <laughs> if you want to, the picture definitely dates <laughs> it. Um, but it was great. It was really great. It kind of a lot put us on the scene. Um, that first year, we had about 15 residential clients that called um, that we would install garden beds. Um, Gabe had the horticulture and carpentry experience. I was doing all the business management. Um, so we really focused on residential. Um, that seemed like a logical direction. It was also kind of what we were basing the company off of, of looking at other businesses around the country. And so a uh, residential focus, you know, going to homeowners, putting the garden beds in, and that was really successful. But what we were surprised at is we didn't realize that there were kind of other applications for this. Um, and in the first year, we got our first call from a restaurant. Uh, the restaurant at the time had three locations. It's Be Good Restaurant. Um, they called us about putting kiddie pools on the roof of their Brookline location. And they were like, hey, what do you think? You want to do some farming with us? Uh, we'll pay you in food. <laughs> And um, we thought it was a great opportunity to get started. And so we said, yes, absolutely. And we put some kiddie pools on the roof of their Brookline location. Those pools have since been moved from the Brookline location to downtown crossing uh, to a parking garage rooftop, which we expanded it to 40 pools from 10, and then again moved to the south end. So these pools have seen all of Boston at this point. Um, but we really, really great application of growing in general because they're very, very mobile. Um, so it was really good that we kind of decided that early on. Um, but Bega was our first restaurant and we realized that it was possible to work with restaurants and that they would be interested in growing food on site. So that was great. And the other thing that happened is we got a call, an inbound call from Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. And they were really excited to have read about us in Edible Boston because they had been thinking for over a year about having an employee wellness program where their staff could get outside and grow food in the garden. And so they brought us that idea. They were interested in piloting it with us. They wanted to do it at two of their locations. They were excited to work with a local company. And so uh, we were able to put in a bunch of garden beds at two Harvard Pilgrim locations, which was a huge contract for us at the time. Now it's like bubkus. Um, but it was a huge deal for us. It was like a real commercial client. Um, and you know, it was an interesting process because a lot of the products and services that we offer them, we don't offer now because they don't really work for one reason or another, which is another reason I put the slide up here 
because that, that raised bed doesn't work. The one with the legs. Um, the air goes below it and it dries it out and we found it really wasn't that successful. But we did it and we have since replaced it for them um, without admitting that we were wrong. So it's lucky when you get to do that. Um, so anyway, we got started, uh, you know, and that was kind of the first year. Another big thing that happened in the first year is my business partner left. Um, and he left in about June, July of our first season. Uh, I will remind you to earlier in this conversation that I don't have any horticulture experience at the time. Um, so myself, uh, and actually luckily I had a one day a week intern who I was like, hey, you wanna work more? <laughs> you wanna get paid for more? And she was into it and the two of us just went for it. Um, we pretty much learned as we went. Uh, I want to thank Russell's Garden Center in Wayland for allowing us to walk in with samples and questions and, and be our resource. So we basically just reached out to horticultural experts to get us through that year. If anyone remembers uh, or anybody grows food, 2009 was a terrible season for growing. Um, there was a lot of late blight in the area. There was tons and tons of tomato diseases and it was all over the news. And so we got really lucky because no one knew that we had no idea what we were doing. We just kept forwarding them the articles from the globe. We were like, oh, look at how bad of a growing season it is. And, and also another thing to note is that the people who worked with us in 2009 were true early adopters. They really were. They knew they were getting in with this company that was getting started. They knew they were hiring a business that was run by two 24 year olds. And they were totally into it. And so they were very, very flexible. And I think the real key there in terms of all of our mistakes and errors was simply being in, in good communication with the people that we were working with and with our clients. And they were totally down to kind of learn through these issues with us. Um, so I learned a really great lesson in that regard. Um, so anyway, that was a big moment, but I, I just decided that we should keep going. Um, it seemed like it was a good idea. We were getting a lot of positive feedback. And so I kept going with it. Um, over time and over the years, we were able to get some really significant additional customers um, and also develop some really great products and services that we were able to offer. And so um, I say we because over the years, I've kind of had people work for the company who have really brought a lot of passion and come in with a lot of really great ideas. So it, I mean, in order to kind of scale at this rate, you, it has to be collaborative and you have to have a lot of people involved. Um, so some notable projects that I think have been real catalysts for us is that we were able to um, work with additional businesses. We work with, um, this is Mass Medical Society in the corner, um, which helped us continue to get additional corporate wellness programs. We started to have a really nice list of businesses that uh, believed in the work that we were doing and could vouch for us. We developed cold frames for season extension. We developed pest fencing. And we got our first opportunity to do a rooftop farm. Uh, we got brought in by Recover Green Roofs, which is another Somerville company that specializes in green roofs um, to do their first rooftop farm. Um, they had gotten asked to do one by a restaurant and they were like, hey, do you guys want to maintain it? And it was a really wonderful opportunity of both companies sitting over beers and being like, so neither of us have ever done anything like this, but I think we're both going to do it and just go for it. And so that was a really great partnership and we've worked with them since. Um, we work with them on a bunch of our rooftop farms and we got, um, we got asked to do Camp Harborview for the Boys and Girls Club, which is a really significant program. Um, we work with 800 inner city youth at that program over the course of eight weeks. It's 100 kids a day. Um, they don't have to pay to go to the camp and they get the experience of, of growing food. It's really, really unique. And um, that again, it's been a real cornerstone for us to show that it works and to be able to get additional education programming. So all of this led up to, I think, a critical moment in 2013 where we were asked to bid on doing a rooftop farm for Whole Foods grocery store location. Um, so we bid on that project and won. And we bid on the project with Recover Green Roofs um, because we had a great example of the work that we had done before previously. We we're like, we can do this as just a larger scale of the same, same exact project. And so it was really successful that we got that bid. I mean, for a lot of different reasons. Um, one, this project's gigantic. Um, it's the largest rooftop farm in New England. Uh, it is, grows about 7,000 pounds of produce, all of which is served, just available for purchase right below where the farm is. And it's a huge contract for us. It's just a huge revenue stream for us because it's huge. It's really big. Um, but it was really, really important in terms of showing the kind of credibility of having a national company behind you. And so, you know, being able to say that we work with Whole Foods and being able to show this project as a showcase was a huge turning, uh, really turning stone for us in terms of what kind of growth the company could show. 
Um, so it's been really great, I mean, really, really great since. Um, I've had a wonderful, wonderful team of people over the years. Um, at this point, I have kind of some, a lot of the same people as I did in 2013, and it's a real collaborative effort. We have 20 employees at Green City Growers. It's pretty big now, which started with two um, about eight years ago, and um, it's just continuing to grow. And we really see kind of this point as a jump off to growth in general. Um, Fenway Park is clearly a pretty serious client for us for a couple different reasons. Um, one, clearly it is a big name to be associated with, but also it's just a huge moment for urban agriculture. Uh, this project is visible to about a half a million individuals annually between the tours and people at the park to see games, which means there's a lot of people who are seeing food growing in spaces that didn't traditionally grow food that they didn't realize you could grow so much produce in such a small space. So we're getting really positive reactions about it. Um, we just see it as being a huge, huge uh, milestone for urban agriculture and its acceptance in general. So I feel like it's only gonna go up from here, which is really, really exciting. So, yeah, cool. And that brings us to date, to me sitting right here in front of all of you.